Today, we have a phenomenal new member to introduce. If Chad Brown will make his way to the front of the podium, please. He's sponsored by Rotarian Lisa Farrell, who is unfortunately not able to be here today. She and Jim are taking their youngest to college. Chad is the Vice President of Private Investments at the Circumference Group, where he is focused on investing in pre-Series A businesses in the mobility, digital marketing, and B2B software and services spaces. Prior to this position, Chad was the Director of Research for 10 years at the Circumference Group's Public Market Hedge Fund, the Core Value Fund. Between these roles, Chad spent two and a half years as the Director of Strategic Finance at Constant Contact, where he was focused on corporate development, customer analytics, and long-term financial planning. Before joining Circumference, Chad was an analyst at Altel Wireless on the customer research and analytics team. Chad is a native of Sherwood, attended Sylvan Hills High School, and graduated from Harvard University with a BA in economics. Chad is also a graduate of Leadership Greater Little Rock, Class 27, and serves on the board of directors at the Hat Club and the Boys and Girls Club of Central Arkansas, where he is a board chair. We are honored you've joined the ranks of Club 99, Chad. You, in the words of President Peacock, who is standing in on behalf of your sponsor, will make a terrific Rotarian. Congratulations and welcome. Thank you, Lori, Wanda, and Molly. Um, we're excited to keep our streak alive, Chad. Uh, seven straight weeks with a new member. Uh, welcome to Club 99. Great to have you in Rotary. Last week, several volunteers gathered in the Rotary office to fill goodie bags for students for yesterday's first day of classes at Dunbar. Several others helped the following night at Dunbar's Back to School Bash. Major props to Don Coe and Methodist Family Health for his incredible grill. Don, will you stand up? Uh, it was unbelievable, guys. This guy has... There it is right here. This grill is, is bigger than two tables. It's unbelievable. Uh, it's the most impressive grill I've ever seen in my life. And I'm grateful that Don uh, agreed to uh, loan it out to us for the day. And uh, I think we may be working on a fun little tailgate. The uh, Dunbar Bobcats play on Tuesdays. And I think during President Hank Kelly's year, there was a tailgate for one of the games. We're going to bring that back in this post-COVID world. And Hank, I hope you'll be there. I think it's going to be October, not sure, the 4th, October the 4th. So please mark the date for that. It'll be a really fun time to come out, uh, help us grill and uh, participate in the community of Dunbar as they uh, partake in one of their football games, the junior high team. It'll be at Little Rock Central's uh, Quigley Stadium. So historic stadium. Um, we also, during the uh, back to school bash, we cooked up and served up 250 hamburgers and hot dogs, 250. Uh, the assortment of chips, cookies, and drinks uh, for students, parents, and teachers, and staff. Um, I think they were over the moon over a Rotary's involvement with the school. Very, very appreciative. Uh, but if you were one of those faithful volunteers last week for either the goodie bags or for the back of school bash or for both, please stand up so we can acknowledge you. A uh, reminder, Mary and Ed Levy will host a farewell reception for Anna A. and Manon at their Arkansas River home this Friday evening. I get that right? All right, good. I'm working on it. I'm getting better. Details in the RSVP uh, link are online and in your most recent e-newsletter, so be sure and Check that out, help us get an accurate count. And of course, we've said this many times, but we're gonna to continue to say it. Uh, we need you to volunteer, or excuse me, to sign up for the Club 99 dinner parties on September 27th. Reminder, do not show up here on Tuesday unless you just wanna do a museum tour. We will not serve you food at lunch, 
um, Ellen Cockrell and Kelly Bass with the membership team, engagement team are working on that. Um, Ellen has found several of you to volunteer and be hosts that evening. I think we're still working on a few, but thank you so much for doing that. Uh, so that's why it's so important to sign up so we'll know if we have enough room for everyone and be sure and let us know if you're bringing a significant other. Um, I promise you it'll be one of the more fun nights you have this fall. It's a great time uh, entertaining and having fun in another Rotarian's home. Uh, please make an effort to participate, um, but please also RSVP. Right, Karen? All right. <clears throat> now, during our La Petite Rose Tricentennial, I will spend my year as Rotary President telling unique stories about our region's past 300 years. For those of you of here who've been here more than once, this should be no surprise to you this year. Um, with our French participants of the Ottenheimer International Youth Program presenting today, this seems like the most appropriate time to share more about Jean-Baptiste Bernard de la Harpe. <laughs> and while we are marking the tricentennial this year of our region's namesake founding. But before I do that, I'd like to make a few quick notes about the long friendship America, and specifically Arkansas, has had with the French. Did you know that of the stars on our state flag, one of them refers to France? I'm sure most of you that took fifth grade Arkansas history know that by now. In our pre-statehood days, a king of England never ruled over this territory. Well, I hadn't thought about that before. The last king who did rule over us, however, was King Carlos IV of Spain. But get this, the last one that was a non-American was the French Emperor Napoleon. He briefly ruled over this territory for three weeks. <laughs> no joke, 20 days actually. Uh, it was the time between the French regaining the Louisiana Purchase area, Louisiana Territory, and before uh, President uh, Jefferson bought that from Napoleon. So anyway, just a unique story there for Arkansas. And of course, that territory would, we became the third state that came out of the Louisiana Purchase area. Uh, the French were instrumental in helping the colonists in the Revolutionary War against Britain. So thank you again for that. Uh, and I think uh, and it's fair to say that we helped repay the favor tenfold when many of our young men gave their lives in the global wars of the past century, aligned with Britain, France, and other allied powers uh, for the sake of democracy and freedom. There are many direct French investments in Arkansas today with the Seoul Falcon Jet and L'Oreal among the most prominent with hundreds of jobs right here in central Arkansas. So we are truly grateful for our longstanding ties to the French. So thank you. And now to the story. His 1722 expedition up the Arkansas River was not Bernard de la Harpe's first rodeo, hardly. By 1703, at the age of 20, the French explorer had already visited South America on a diplomatic mission under the flag of Philip V of Spain. He returned to France three years later with a bride from Peru. Hoping to improve his financial position, La Harpe acquired a land grant along the Red River in Louisiana and left France in 1718 for New Orleans. Jean-Baptiste Le Moyne Benville, the ambitious governor of the colony of Louisiana, charged La Harpe with exploring the upper reaches of the Red River Valley. In April of 1719, his party of 40 men established a trading post on the stream near where Texarkana is now located on land purchased from the Nassanite tribe. Wishing to develop trade with additional Indian tribes, La Harpe led a band of nine men, three of whom were cattle guides and 22 horses loaded with supplies up the Red River Valley. 
that summer to what's now southeastern Oklahoma. Turning north, Laharp and his company bushwhacked through the western end of the Wachita Mountains for several weeks before encountering a large Wichita village, likely a short distance south of present day Tulsa. Many claim um, Laharp as the first French explorer to explore Oklahoma. Uh, they were warmly received in that area, and on their return trip through the Washitas, Laharp and his men became lost. So I hope all of you are done eating by now. They survived by eating their horses before eventually showing up at their starting point in mid-October of 1719. Laharp then traveled back to New Orleans and sailed home to France. 1721 found Laharp once again in North America, this time on an unsuccessful mission to reestablish a French presence on what we now know as the Texas Gulf Coast. He drew the first known map of Galveston Bay and Galveston Island but hostile Native Americans rebuffed his attempts to launch a settlement in the area. In late 1721, Governor Benville gave Laharp another assignment to explore the Arkansas River. The objective was to solidify the French hold on the area by fostering trade routes with the Spanish and the Indians to the South and the West. With a party of some two dozen men Laharp departed New Orleans in December, heading up the Mississippi and arriving at the mouth of the Arkansas River on February 27, 1722. After a brief stop at Arkansas Post for supplies, the expedition continued its difficult upstream journey. And here's where we come in. On April 9th, 1722, just over 300 years ago this year, after traveling well over 100 meandering miles through the Delta landscapes of the Arkansas River, swampy Delta landscapes, Laharp and his men recognized a change in the topography. Several hills appeared near the water's edge, and for the first time they noticed, as he recorded in his journal, and I'll quote, rocks sticking out of the ground. Contrary to popular legend, the harp did not bestow a name on this first rocky outcrop on the south side of the Arkansas River, the one right over there. Although a mile or so upstream and on the opposite shore, La Harp noted Le Rocher Francois Bluff of Mountainous Rock, or what's now commonly called the Big Rock in North Little Rock, the beautiful cliff that many of you have seen or noticed. As for that smaller outcropping on the river south bank, the one just a few blocks from here. Over the years, it was known as La Petite Rocher or the Little Rock. That very phrase, La Petite Rocher, as far as we know, first appeared on a French map, 1799, about the Ouachita region. And then on November 7th, 1831, Little Rock was officially chartered as a town in the Arkansas Territory. As you know, this year, we're marking 300 years since Laharp's expedition up the Arkansas River. It's why our friends are here today from France and why we are focusing our year on illuminating the rock. Hence, our temporary podium sign. I hope it says the Rotary Club of La Petite Roche. Anybody caught that yet? It's been there a couple of weeks. Uh, it's just temporary, okay? Don't nobody panic. As for Laharp, he returned to France the next year, 1723, never to return again to the Americas. He passed away 42 years later in 1765. And that's our Illuminating the Rock story for this week. And now T. Martin, I'd like for you to introduce our new friends from France. Thank you. Thanks, Denver. Uh, bonjour and greetings from Club 99's Ottenheimer Committee. Uh, it's been three years since we've been able to bring visitors to Little Rock, 
on the uh, Ottenheimer International Youth Program. COVID obviously has prevented international travel for the past few years. Uh, this year, our committee selected France as our guest country for obvious reasons. Denver recommended it, and it just seemed like a great idea. And so we have uh, three very intelligent young women who have come to visit, and you're going to hear about a very exciting trip that they've had and visit here in mm -hmm. Arkansas in just a few minutes ago. Uh, uh, it's fitting that we are meeting here today on the banks of the Arkansas River to celebrate the visit of our visitors from France. Just 300 years ago, La Harpe passed up. If he was traveling up the river today, he would probably be welcomed by the Arkansas Department of Transportation at our bridge. Before I make their formal introductions, I would like to rec recognize those who have made this visit possible. First, I'd like to ask that all members of the Ottenheimer Committee stand. And in particular, I want to point out that my co-chair, Cindy Van Beckhoven, has been the primary contact for this visit. And thank you, Cindy, so much for your organizational skills. Next, any of you who have hosted uh, our guests or will be hosting them, and it may be still some of those of you standing, those additional people, please stand at this time, if you would. Anybody else hosting or to host? Thanks everybody for making this such a great trip. And of course, we couldn't do anything in Rotary 99 without Karen Fetzer. So Karen is always the go-to person. So our first visitor is Anne Bosson and her hometown is France. She's a student at the Paris 8 University, and she's working on a master's in cultural industries, which is music and cinema industries. Her hobbies are photography, music, art, and acting. Next, we have Manon Bouchrot. Her hometown is, uh, she's splitting it between Limoges and Angers. Uh, Manon has studied engineering at La Sap uh, Engineering School, and she's now working while going to school at the electrical engineering company Legrand. And she's been doing this for three years, and she's interested in risk management. They all have various activities and hobbies that they've been able to experience here in the state, and we're anxious to hear about your trip and also your country. Well, among the, the things that we learned here, uh, I learned to say, good afternoon, y'all. <laughs> we are fixing to do a presentation for y'all. So yeah, thank you for hearing us, having us, and let's get started. Okay, well, as you can see, we didn't really have the time to prepare that much, so we are a bit confused right now, but it's okay. So basically, we're not going to repeat what uh, Tim Martin just said. Uh, we're just going to talk a bit more about our family and what we, where we come from and why we love France so much, and we really want to make you love France as much as we do. Yes. So I'm Anna Bosson. I was born in Paris, I lived in Paris, I did everything Paris, and uh, yes, um, oh yeah, my family. <laughs> well, I, have, I live with my mother and my dog, and um, I have a brother, an older brother, who is 26, and he, he's an anesthesiologist, so, yeah. And I, I've struggled a lot to say this word, so now I'm happy to be able to say it correctly. <laughs> So yeah, so I just have a question for you and I, mm -hmm. what do you like to do later? 
in your <laughs> life. <laughs> well, don't ask me because I, I will not be able to tell you. To tell you. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, we have been asked this question so many times. And every time she was looking at me like, I really need to invent something <laughs> at some point. So, yeah, sorry, this is my turn. <laughs> so, I said to you that I was born in Paris. And I know um, many of you actually have gone to Paris and France, but most in Paris. And for you, I, I think Paris is that. But I have um, another vision because this is my city. And it's more like this. Um, you know, I live in the, the 20th arrondissement district, maybe, of Paris, and it's a very, very like um, a real city where people live, and it's not really very touristic. I live near uh, the Père Lachaise Cemetery, if you know about this, like Jim Morrison, he's buried here. And um, I live uh, where Edith Piaf uh, used to live, so I think I'm... I live in the real Paris, so you should come, really. Don't, don't focus on the Eiffel Tower and everything. So, as you can see, um, for me, it's a little bit more complicated. So I grew up in the south of France, next to Toulouse, which is really in the south. Actually, I didn't put anything on it, but really on the south. Then I followed my dad, who was at the time in the military, and we went into Orléans, which is the city we're going to talk about today, because it's the city where our Rotary Club is from. And then I studied, studied, studied thank you, I can't get that right, uh, in Paris for two years, and then I started engineering school in Angers, which is on the left, and in the middle of France is where my company is. So basically I am in my car all the time doing this infernal triangle to try and please my mom to see her almost every two weeks or she's not happy with me. So talking about my mom, so my parents are still together. We all used to live in Orléans with my two brothers and my two cats. My older brother is an engineer as well. He's 26 almost. And my younger brother is just going to start university uh, because he's 18. So, <laughs> so as ambassadors of uh, the French, we have to make sure that you'll want to come to visit France, uh, France and not only Paris. So this is where we are going to present you uh, most of uh, a few of the, of the most beautiful places in France and the most beautiful landscapes um, to show you the diversity and the beauty of, it, of this country. And you know, as Arkansas, I would say that France is a natural state. So this is the Calanque of Marseille. Many of you have gone to Marseille, I know that too. So yeah, in the south. The Camargue in the south, there are many horses for the, the cowboys. <laughs> La Haute Savoie is in like it's Savoy. Um, this is the mountains. We have a lot of mountains, but I, these are my favorite. Strasbourg is really like Germany influenced, and it's really there's a beautiful cathedral here. Well, Normandy, Normandy. I know that many of you love Normandy. I know that. And this is uh, near Bordeaux, where um, the last uh, high temperatures, uh, oh, I don't know how to say that. <laughs> we had a lot of fires over there yes. during the summer and it destroyed a lot of the forest. Uh, the fire that lasts for like a week without mm -hmm. being, we, were, we weren't able to put, it, to put it out for like a week. Now everything is better, but we hope that it won't happen again. But yeah. So we had to, pre to pay tribute to, to it. So now I would like to focus more on what we call Le Chateau de la Loire, which is basically the castle that are around the river. So you may or may not know that French people are actually crazy about castle. We have many, many of them. Um, la Loire was like, like is one of the biggest river we have in France. So it's really strategic for people in time, in the, in the time 
to actually build houses next to it for water, for water, bétail. Yeah. for animals and stuff and for agriculture. So we have a lot of castles, as you can see. And now I would like to know if any of you actually know how many of them we have just next to this river. So you might think like it's 30, it is not. You might think that it's 100, it's not. Maybe 300, still not. It actually is 3,000. <laughs> so, Now you understand why you have to come to France multiple times if you want to see all of them. <laughs> so we really are crazy about castles. So now we're going to talk about Orléans, which is um, the city where the Rotary Club uh, is from. So it's th thanks to them that we're here today. Thanks to you as well, but you know. Um, Orléans is the capital of the region Centre Val de Loire. Um, well, Manon used to live there, and I'm very attached to this city because my grandparents live there too. So this is why we, we met. Yeah. So yeah, we actually met there for the first time, and now it's time for me to read my notes because I don't know anything about Orléans actually. <laughs> That's not true, but I don't have the, the digit and stuff. So it is like a middle city for France, not too big, not too small. It's like 170, 17,000 um, inhabitants. If you take, so as you can see here, Little Rock is actually a huge city for us. And in France, we don't work like that. So you will have like mainly a big city and then a lot of city around, but still considered as Orléans, but not really Orléans. Is that clear? So basically, if you take everything around Orléans, we have 22 little city and little village as well. And if, we, if you count all of that, it's 430,000 uh, inhabitants. In Orléans, the population is quite young because out, one person out of four is actually under 20. So fortunately, we do have a lot of schools, a lot of high schools, primary school, uh, college, university, uh, engineering school as well. So we do have a lot of things here. A little bit of history. Uh, so Orléans was a st strategic point during the antiquity period, because as we said, it's uh, near the Loire. So it's a land of agriculture, so it was easy for the trade, the trade, yeah. Um, it was considered as one of the most beautiful cities uh, during the Middle Age, but um, the religious wars um, altered um, its expansion. Um, there's the, cat the cathedral, um, which is for us, we agreed on, on that, that it's more beautiful than Notre Dame, I'm sorry. And uh, it has been destroyed and rebuilt many times. And it's a classified city because as you may know that in France, uh, monuments and everything is classified. So people um, keep them as it is. So yeah, it's a classified city because there are so much beautiful things to see and monuments and history and everything. So, yeah. so Let's talk a little bit about high technology and what we have in Orléans. So as I said, we have a lot of young people, but we also have a lot of innovation over there. We have a lot of, lot of startup over there. One of them is actually the one my dad's working and they are so good at what they're doing. So they're doing drones. They're so good that they are even um, concurrencing Naval Group. And I don't know if you've heard of that, but basically it's the biggest company that we have in France that do every military stuff. So we do have a lot of talented people in Orléans and I'm glad to say that my dad is one of them. Um, we also have a lot of hard history. We are really, really well known for sports. Um, I can't remember the name of the sport we're good at, fencing. I, well, I remember, but I'm, I didn't know how to say it. So in Orléans, actually in my high school, when I was young, we had what we call police poire 
which every young people that are really good at fencing goes to. And they're trying to go pro in my high school. So I was actually able to see some people fencing and stuff. That was really good. But the most important thing about Orléans is Jean Joan of Arc. Um, I don't know why everybody knows her, but <laughs> so in 1429, at, during the uh, Hundred Years War, uh, she liberated Orléans because she had visions that she had to. And um, she's now a symbol of resistance and courage. Um, and yeah. Uh, womanhood, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, and uh, she's celebrated every year um, in Orléans. Uh, it's called the Fête Joannique. And um, Orléans is special because um, it was invaded by the, the English. So she liberated it from them. Quite, It's quite the same as here. You know, we pushed them. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Well, basically, we don't really like British people, and neither do you, so. <laughs> no, this, this is what we have in common. And she, she made the British people leave France, like um, France did the same thing for America. So anyway, we thought that it would be actually really bad of, of us not to talk about all Rotary for, in Orléans, because if we are here today talking to you, it's thanks to them. And so... Today, there are 45 person in this Rotary Club. Th their age is between 25 and 90. And it was founded in uh, 1933. We're part of the district 1720 and it regrouped more than 50 clubs. So 1,600 person in total. So just like you actually, we're not that different. We're meeting, well, we know they are because <laughs> I'm not part of it, but they're meeting once a week. And I think that what we have in common here in the Rosary is that we really want to make the world better, try to make it fair and help people that actually need it. And this is exactly what they do in Orléans as well, especially helping young people. So for example, in primary school, they create what we call reading programs just to help people, the young, the young people that struggle with reading uh, for Okay, we have this thing that we call college, which is between primary school and high school. You don't have it, but we call it college, which is definitely not the same thing. So people are 10 years old or something. They are helping them to buy books when they count for school. In a high school, they are um, helping for oral presentation, everything that could help during exams as well. And they help during orientation when young people don't really know what they do, because we all know, I'm pretty sure that all of you are parents and you know how hard is it for children at 18 to try and figure out what they want to do later so they're helping for that we also have global help so they help financially uh, internship abroad for students that can't afford it and also they um, help during covid a lot for people that were struggling uh, especially young people they are also um financing financing uh, and protests for young disabled children, which I think is wonderful. We are also protecting culture over there. So they help financially museums. Um, they organize what we call Piano International Tournament. And well, basically I think that's already a lot to say, but we are really active and they are really active um, and uh, just like you. So now let's talk about the Rotary Club Orléans and the Otto Reimer program. So we're not the first to come here and I hope that we won't be the last either. Um, we have people came in France as well. So um, American, Brazilians, Argentinian, Canadians and Italians, all of them were people that we uh, hosted in France. And in exchange, we also sent people to America, Mexico, Brazil, Peru and Taiwan. So obviously, we would like to thank you all because that's what made it possible is all of you, all the Rotary Club in, in all around the world. And thanks to you, we're able to learn more and we are actually living an experience that we know not a lot of people can leave. So to quickly introduce the fact that we have done so many things. <laughs> I, I, I 
So first, we have discovered Arkansas' story. Yes, Arkansas. Uh, we've been to um, the old state house. We've been to old Washington. We, uh, we've been to the Winthrop Rockefeller Institute, a foundation or institute where I don't remember, institute, <laughs> uh, to the Bill Clinton Library. Uh, we met the governor uh, yesterday, so thank you for um, made it possible. Made it, made, yeah, made it possible. <laughs> um, it, yes, we also. Yeah, well, we also did some religious practices. Um, so we saw the church. We went to a core, core, core. Well, it was so beautiful, by the way. Yeah. And we saw a lot of landscapes and area all around Arkansas. And when we first came here, we thought that we were going to stay mainly in Little Rock. And we're so pleased to see that actually you were so nice that you brought us a bit everywhere in the, in Arkansas. So, and obviously we had a lot of fun. Yeah. So we went wakeboarding, horse riding, uh, tubing, swimming, um, in swimming pools, uh, seeing like beautiful houses landscape and it's all thanks to to you so we really would like to thank you very much for all of that thank you thank you so Anne and Manon uh, you're two brilliant women from France. I'm sure you had a perspective of Arkansas and the United States before you came. Yes. What's your impression of us now? Well, Ed Levy, this is for you. <laughs> uh, before coming to America, I thought that I would like America. But now that I'm here, I love America. <laughs> Well, it was the, the, the little joke, you know, but uh, to be serious, um, we are really surprised and happy about the fact that the cliches that we had are most of them true. And don't get us wrong, it's so cool because uh, we feel like we you live in a movie and that, yeah, it hasn't changed in decades. And we are so grateful to be able to see that and live that and everything. So yeah, it's really cool. So yeah, we're mostly talking about the city, how the city looks and stuff. But if we're talking about Americans now, we're so surprised in a good way because obviously what happened the past few years um, about any political subject, we were, you know, it's so far from what we believe in France that we were like, okay, let's go and see. Let's not talk about politics, everything that could be could lead us to problems and actually we met such wonderful people open-minded people that every subject that we told we we were telling each other in the plane not to talk about we've talked about any everything so far <laughs> everything so yeah and one thing i remember driving around little rock with you um we were talking about the age of your country you know centuries of history and architecture here in Arkansas, it's a little different, uh, but you had some really interesting comments to me about the state, um, about the architecture, and we think oh, yeah. that our country's very okay. young. Yeah, well, okay, so the, mainly the, the thing that we were talking the most about, and please don't get offended, is when you call something old, <laughs> we're just having fun. Like, okay. <laughs> So basically, Tia Martin was like, okay, this is a really old building. It's like 200 years ago. Okay. <laughs> so it's basically new for us. Okay. So, so in France, yeah, you do, we do have some uh, buildings that are like 2,000 years ago. That, was, that were built 2,000 years ago. So, but what you have that we don't have is that because everything is new, everything is so beautiful. You have beautiful houses. Actually, you have huge, beautiful houses. <laughs> that will cost millions in France. So we're already, like, every time we go to like really beautiful neighborhood, we're like, wow, look at this. This is just crazy. But uh, yeah, so beautiful. Uh, are there any questions from the audience? <laughs> Kenny? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> 
Penny, you're too old. <laughs> well, okay. So it was asking us if we actually have boyfriend back in France. Uh, I do. His name is Adrien and is like me uh, in my engineering school. And he lives in the normally before leaving for engineering school, he was living in the south of France in Nice. And he just loves it too much. He talked about it way too many times for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's complicated. <laughs> 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 so, uh, after, on, on Sunday, are there any other questions? On Sunday, you're going to travel to Washington, D.C. for three days and spend time there, and then you'll be back home. What are you going to do as soon as you get home? Wow. Oh, sleep. <laughs> no, but mainly sleep at first for the two first day, and then, unfortunately, my life is not as funny. I can't be on vacation all my life, unfortunately, so I will be back to work. And then end of September, I will have my final presentation for finally be an official engineer. And then I will be officially graduated if everything goes according to plan, which I hope it will. As for me, I'm still in school at the university because I did a gap year two years ago. So I still have one year left to, to do. And uh, yeah, babysitting, waitressing and schooling, yeah. So the plan. Okay, any other comments about Arkansas or? Um, we love you. <laughs> <laughs> any other questions? Well, thank you. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry, Stacy. There was a, a reference to Orleans being a protected city in terms of innovation and technology. Do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah. Um, Well, historic preservation, Stacy's asking about whether it's a, a local, a state, or a federal. Well, uh, there is a division in politics and power. Like the, the state is decentralized. I don't know if it, yeah. Um, but it's, um, national. it's a national, yes, decision, yes. And um, actually, Orléans is one of the many cities that has this. Um, <laughs> laws about it so even in other city if you want to build your house you cannot choose your roof you cannot choose the way your house is going to be built you can choose if it's big or small or you can choose whatever you want inside but outside it has to look in certain way just to match the the city or the village because we have really whole villages that are typical and if you want to build more of it you just have to stick with how it looks so it doesn't look weird so yeah i i noticed it oh i'm sorry denver <laughs> did you have any favorite food in arkansas well, okay so another thing that actually good question so when we came here we were like oh we're gonna eat like american food for three weeks <laughs> it's gonna be disgusting i will i will miss my cheese and bread and whatever and actually what happened is that it's so good. Yes. It is so, so good. So we enjoyed your meat. We enjoyed uh, everything. I actually like the, you like fried. Okay, you're crazy about sugars and you're also crazy about ice, uh, ice in your, in your, <laughs> everything you're drinking. You guys like it's half water, half ice. More. <laughs> this is weird, but okay. But so far, really, it was really good. Yeah. And if I have something more to add, as I said, we have way too many castles. Some of them are actually like the state can't take care of any of the castle we have because 3,000 castles is just for La Loire, but uh, you can imagine that we have thousands of them. So you guys are actually welcome to buy some and take care of it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, that's great. Well, uh, thank you so much for Thanks. coming. We've enjoyed the visit. Uh, we wish you a, a good return home. And uh, uh, we look forward to maybe seeing you in the future. Yeah, it's planned. It's planned. Thank you so much. Um, I asked uh, Cindy to come up too, because as you know, we have co-chairs for the Ottenheimer Committee and 
we rotate. So uh, when it's the female year, our female co-chairs kind of heads it up. It just so happened that T. Martin helped out with the program today and has obviously been very supportive of the committee, but I wanted to make sure Cindy was recognized for her efforts. Uh, thank you so much for doing all you've done. Before I present their uh, gifts for the uh, the week, I want to make remind you we have a board meeting afterwards for those of you on the board. It's going to be at the Clinton School. Thank you to Dean Vicky for uh, allowing us to meet close by. Uh, the farewell farewell reception at the Levy's is Friday, so don't miss that. I think now that some of you have gotten to know them, you can see why that would be really fun to participate on Friday evening. Uh, next week, uh, Chris East of Studio Maine and several of the winners from the Envisioning 30 Crossing Design Competition will be presenting to us some of their winning designs for how they uh, envision with the amount, proper amount of local, state, and federal funding uh, and, and local funding that we can actually revamp this area between where we meet and where our office is right here by the I-30. Uh, bridge. So that's going to be a really interesting and informative program. I hope you all take time to join us next week. Um, for uh, Anna A, this is our book. She persisted in science by uh, Chelsea Clinton, and she persisted in sports for Manu. Uh, <laughs> these are signed copies uh, by the daughter of President Clinton. The museum is named after uh, the library and. What we're doing this year uh, for our Illuminate the Rock gifts is we're uh, giving gifts, uh, books uh, written by Little Rock Connected authors. And of course, Chelsea spent most of her childhood here in Little Rock. Um, and we're gonna donate uh, a selection of these books uh, and several others to all our area elementary school libraries and resource centers. And so at the end of the year, these will be uh, given in your name and all the other speakers will be given in your name to those libraries. So thank you very much. And thank you so much. Yeah. Um, we, we also have Illuminate the Rock pins, so you can take these home and be proud. These are, <laughs> again, furthering our French connection. And then of course, the uh, highest honor that we can give to uh, visiting Arkansan is the Arkansas Traveler Certificate. Um, it symbolizes the uh, spirit of coming and visiting Arkansas and then going forth and saying great things about your experiences here in Arkansas. And so I won't go through the whole story. It's a really cool one, but you can read it on the certificate. Uh, but these are for both of you. And I want Cindy and T. Martin to present them, if you don't mind. Sure. And then if we can get a photo, maybe you want to do it down here? Can we do it down front? Um, And we have one final thing, uh, the flag exchange, uh, which is a custom of